Welcome in to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures as we get settled in. For you folks that are seeing this and hearing it on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you are going to get an abridged version. I'm going to cut the cord at some point and send you off on your day. I'm encouraging you to go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live. If you want the show uninterrupted or be able to complete the show today. And as always, you can download the show wherever you download audio podcasts. Just search Eric Zane show or just go to my website. It's impossible to mess this up. Absolutely impossible to do that. Welcome into the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio, where I've been doing this for nearly three years and seven months. A lot to get to today. I'm annoyed as fuck. Uh, Did not sleep well last night. It stems from, you know, you're just laying there. And then it dawns on you uh, that uh, you've discovered something that's just annoying. It doesn't matter what it is. A little, a, a, a little thing that, okay, here you are. You're winding down. You're tired. All you'd like to do is rest. I had a, uh, a, a wonderful evening with my lovely wife, uh, but uh, something kept surfacing throughout the day that kept annoying the fuck out of me. And I was like, boy, I wish this would just stop. I, I, I'm trying to spend some time uh, with my wife on our 30th anniversary, and I keep uh, getting, like, pestered and bothered in this particular way that is making me fucking mad. Uh, So much so that I wish that I had one of those Glock switches, which I'm going to talk about with a a magazine that has 33 rounds in it, just so I could go. Have you seen those things? There's a story going on uh, right now about a Glock switch. Glock switch is something I'd never heard of. Until just yesterday. Unbelievable. Hang on. I got to drink this coffee. This is how it's going to be today. Annoyed as fuck. Really, really annoyed. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm laying there. And then um, every night it's, you know, Read the news, figure out things to talk about for the next day, play a game of Candy Crush, and then I'm looking at the phone and I see something and I'm like, huh, what's this? Click on it. I'm like, fuck me. Motherfucker. Son of a bitch. Motherfucking shit. Fuck damn. Close it down and just, uh, I wake my wife up. What? I go, you won't believe this shit. She goes, oh, God. I go, yeah. She goes, just, you just go to bed. I go, it's not that easy. I want to, I actually want, I want to fucking murder somebody. I'm going to have to watch uh, scenes of the Sopranos to calm down of Tony killing people. By the way, rest in peace as we talked about uh, Tony Sirico, the guy who played Pauly. I watch a video of him. An interview like two years ago. He died of dementia. Boy, the guy interviewing him should not have interviewed Tony Sirico uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Because the dementia was uh, definitely taking hold of the poor guy. It was rough. Fuck. That's why I'm always on. I'm very cautious about my dad's mindset on Dear Meathead. Is he sharp enough? To make it so it doesn't seem weird. That's my big concern. We're not there yet. But dear meathead tomorrow. Hang on. I got to finish this. I'm so pissed. I can't finish it. It's too hot. So I just laid there. Pissed off. um, And thinking terrible thoughts. And this goes till like 1 a.m. And uh, then, you know, once once the, the, the night starts to get long and you can't sleep, because I'm a very finicky person when it comes to uh, bedtime. If anything gets me off off my track, it's difficult to get to sleep. 
And so yet another night where I don't fall asleep to like one o'clock. And then what do I dream about? Radio. Yes, I had a radio dream. And this is a recurring one about me and my old radio partner, Joe Volk. Joe's not in the game anymore. But in the dream, uh, I went back to uh, Midland Saginaw Bay City to be his co-host back on the show. And, oh my God, just all sorts of fucked up shit going on. And it's, 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 it wasn't a good dream because everything, all the equipment was busted and my headphones wouldn't work. I couldn't tell if I was even on the air and Joe's sitting there and he's not even paying attention to what I'm saying. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. That was bad. Next thing I know, uh, uh, Bruce has his paw and he's putting it like right in my mouth and I'm, I'm like, wake up. What the fuck? Jesus. So it was just rough. Uh, and I, I don't have the time for a nap in my future today. And this is terrible because it is, um, at the end of what was a wonderful night with the queen of the forest. Here we are. It's our 30th anniversary. And, uh, then I got to, uh, put the, a, a nice cap on the night with all of this bullshit. So fucking annoying. Um, So she says, okay, I have um, four restaurants that we can go to for the anniversary. And I go, what are you thinking? And right away, a couple of them, you know, she goes, these are the bottom two. I go, ah, yeah, I agree with you. They, they should be the bottom two. Let's, let's really do something special. So we narrow it down because uh, I had saved up my pennies for this particular uh, meal and um, honestly no money was no object it can't be an object for your 30th anniversary okay you gotta you gotta go big or go home none of this fucking carabas and applebee's bullshit you gotta go big or go home okay ruth chris or the chop house. Now, where we are in beautiful Grand Rapids, they're right across the street from each other. And I think Ruth's Chris is the fancier of the two. But they're both... This is a big deal. Now, my old, my uh, favorite steakhouse uh, was a place called Judson's. and But they closed up shop. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with that. Why that even? I think it was a pandemic deal. So I go, all right, well, you know what? I've never, I've been to Ruth's Chris, but I've never been to uh, Judson's or uh, uh, Chop House. I go, I go, if you want the bigger of the two, Ruth's Chris is probably the most expensive restaurant in town. I mean, that is, that's an experience. They both are really. I go, go ahead, whatever. And uh, it says no tables available. I go, it settles that. Um, the other place, the chop house, you walk in there though, but this place was fucking sweet. I highly recommend it. If you want to spend money like a, like an asshole. Okay. Um, if you're going to get a steak, that's ridiculously expensive that they brag how long it's been aged and it uh only two percent of the beef in the united states is of this quality it better be it better be the best steak that you've ever had now leading up to this the best steak that i'd ever had uh top two were the palm in nashville tennessee it was the best steak i ever had and then judson's which is no longer in existence. So they're bragging that this is going to be the greatest steak ever. And it's a, uh, it's a porterhouse steak with uh, a part of it being part filet. And the other part is New York strip. And it's a 36 ounce steak. And you know, it's going to be a fucked up price when there's no price. And the menu, when they deliver the menu, it's a, uh, it's an iPad in leather. They delivered a leather-bound 
iPad to you for the menu. You know you're fucked when you're not getting a menu. You're getting a leather-bound iPad. Here's your menu, sir. Here's your iPad, sir. I mean, oh, fuck. This is, gonna, this is the big one. So, that happens. And, uh, I am, you know, again, I don't care about the cost. The, I've prepared for this. You only get one 30th anniversary. And if your wife says to you, hmm, I'm narrowing it down to one of two absolutely ridiculously priced restaurants. If you go, whoa, 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 or eh, you're fucked. You can't do that. You go, yeah, oh, I was thinking the same thing. You know, it's all yes and. You got you to gotta wrap your mind around that. That's how uh, a shitheads like me stay married for 30 years. That's why I said, I am happy with whatever you want. Okay. I am a professional husband. I, I'm really a great husband. Okay. Kenny called it. He said, uh oh, I feel a great husband brag coming. No, you get credit for saying it beforehand, Kenny. Aram, jumping ahead. How much was the bill? Why don't you settle the fuck down and we'll get to it? All right. Settle down, young man. So I've got my leather bound iPad. And, uh,. She goes, oh boy, appetizers. Oh boy, scallops. Yeah. And then the guy comes up and he goes, I'd like to tell you about appetizers. Chef prepares the lobster bisque. It takes four hours per day to create the lobster bisque. Can I interest you in a bowl of lobster bisque? And I said, I'll take one. Solid choice, sir. Diana gets a drink. Uh, This is the type of restaurant that when they deliver your food, it's a coordinated attack. Uh, Our guy, his name was uh, Jameson. And... He gets assistance when it comes time to deliver the food, like the appetizers. They they bring it in and uh, they they hold it above your your place setting at the same time, and then it's like they have like an internal clock one two three, and then they lower it down at the same exact fucking time. And so Diana gets her scallops, and it's three scallops, and it's like thirty bucks. For this appetizer. And uh, she goes, you can have one and a half of these. I go, whatever. You can eat them all, honey. I don't care. And he puts in front of me a a bowl and it's empty with pieces of uh, lobster in it. And he goes, and I I look at it. I'm like, what? And he goes, lobster, lobster bisque is served table side, sir. And he has like this metal container and the soup is in it. And he pours all the soup into the bowl. And it's like, you know, you're, you're pouring milk into a cereal bowl. This is called the chop house, uh, Kyle. That's where we're at. I go, well, great. He goes, will you be having fresh ground pepper, sir? I go, I would love that, Jameson. And, uh. Say when, sir. So, okay, that happens. And I, I got to tell you, this lobster bisque was ridiculous. It's too bad that I am going to make better lobster bisque 
than the one that the sous chef uh, made because I fell in love with this. It's extra creamy, sir. Uh, so we kill that. And then um, when we went ahead and ordered the steak, so I clicked on the leather bound. Thank you, uh, Bluck Tillman. Bluck T- Blick Tillman? Wait, hold on. I got to see that name. Buck Tillman. Buck Tillman. I remember. It's Bud Tillman, you asshole. Um, anyway. I appreciate that. You, you, you push the button on the actual uh, porterhouse steak. It's a 36 ounce steak. That's massive. And it's for, it's, it's for two. And then, um, I said to Diana, I go, do you know how much that steak is? She goes, oh, do you not want me to get it? I go, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want you to. I go, no, no, no. This is our big day. Get out of the, um, uh, um, you know, thinking that we, we can, uh, pull back. You, you eat to your heart's content. You get whatever you want. This is our day. And that steak was $130. She goes, oh, no, should we not do it? I go, fuck it. I go, every steak on everything here is a New York, uh, a 15-ounce New York strip at this restaurant is uh, uh, $61. Uh, 32-ounce steak. Did I say 36? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much, how how large it was. It, it was 35, 36. I think it was 36. I think it was 36 ounce steak. Uh, so anyway, uh, 130 bucks for the steak alone. And uh, then everything here is a la carte. It's all family size portions. So then you order like the uh, uh, potatoes and then, you know, it's like another 15 bucks for an order of potatoes. And then, uh, all right, and and that's it. We just went at it. It was just fantastic. And then when they, they serve the steak, it all just gets delivered at once. It was like that scene in the Blues Brothers when Jake and Elwood are at the Shea Paul, and then they're like, uh, all right, order everything, and all the uh, all the servers are coming over and, and, and helping them out and bringing the food. And uh, so that was fantastic. Uh, yes, it was quite expensive, but worth it. And I will say this. It was not the best steak I've ever had. When they deliver it, it's all sliced up for you. You don't have to do anything to cut it. You know, it's all it's all like um, you can just they they there's a couple pair of these little mini tongs that you can take your little chunks of steak out and eat them. Uh, it's but I thought it was a great steak, okay, and I I do recommend this, but this was not the best steak I've ever had. You know. Um, in fact, in fact, I'm just going to say it. The $23 steak at Logan's, the porterhouse at Logan's is, uh, it's not nearly as big. It's only about a, uh, a 20, 21 ounce steak, but I, it wasn't, it was as good as that. It wasn't, uh, no, I'm not, I, I, I cannot poo poo the Logan steak, the Logan steak is very underrated, okay? And uh, there's this kid who's working there, and he fills up the water bo- the uh, water glass, and uh, everybody is so ridiculously polite and, and just over-the-top proper. And um, as we're getting started, uh, brings like a, a butter and a um, uh, little roll. It's not a roll. It's a... Um, well, how did he use, uh, sir, this is, this is chef's tapioca pop over for, pop over, pop over for you with cheese inside. You will love this, sir. And this kid puts it down in front of me and, um, it's about the size, you know, you know, of, a. Uh, it's just tiny. It's like something you'd hang on your fucking rear view mirror. And 
It was so small. It was really good, but, you know, this is not the type of place that I would prefer. I like peanuts on the floor. But it, you're, you're paying for an experience. Uh, the whole bill, let's see, was, yep, I remember that was, because uh, I saw some of you guessed, $220.18. I had budgeted $300 for the meal. Uh, $220.18 for the meal. And uh, I gave a $50 tip, so we're looking at $270.18, which I will uh, write off on my taxes because I've talked about it on the Eric Zane Show podcast. It was content for the show. That's the old Eric Zane tax loophole. Make your expenses content. And then the government pays for it to some degree, percentage. All right. It comes time for dessert. Do you like this at at tiramisu? I go, I love it. I go, I love everything on that menu on your leather bound iPad, but I am stuffed. I can't eat another fucking thing. I go, let's go and walk it off. And then we'll, uh, and she goes, then we can go to Cold Stone. I go, of course. Yeah, I want to go. Yes, of course. So that's the plan. We start walking around downtown Grand Rapids, and it's been a while since I've walked down there, and the homeless are everywhere. Everywhere. And these, um, this beautiful stretch of road called Monroe Center, which that is where all the maniac Black Lives Matter piece of shits stormed through and fucked up everybody's business. That's where Bob Kayser Kilwin's free uh, free ice cream day emerged when all those sons of bitches busted up Bobby's store. Radio Voice Linda says, will you buy me dinner sometime? We can talk content. Yes, absolutely. You can, you and Maureen, Diana, and I. You can even bring uh, your imaginary boyfriend. You can bring your boyfriend, Kenny, and Maureen can bring her husband. All right. We're walking along Monroe Center, and I love Monroe Center. It's all these little, uh, it's restaurants and shops, and now it's fucking homeless people. And uh, they're they're ruining our city. And I guess I wouldn't mind homeless people so much if they weren't so fucking talkative um, and so bold in their begging. I mean, if a person is sitting there down on their luck, all right, I can live with that. I can understand that you're part of the community. But if you're boldly just busting up to me with your fucking body odor and, 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 hey, got a dollar? Yeah, I do. And I'm not giving it to you, you fucking crackhead. Get out of my fucking face. There uh, were two people um, on this stretch of road. There, there's uh, strategically placed trees lining the street. And on each of those trees, believe it or not, there is a small uh, outlet where you can plug in power. These homeless people have made a camp on our streets. And um, it's it's a park bench where you could sit if you want to take a couple minutes during your walk while you're doing your thing on the street, you know. And uh, they have made a home out of it. And they created a structure around the bench. They've set up a box and put a computer monitor on it. And they've plugged it in. And they've plugged in. I am not kidding you. The only thing that kept me from taking a picture was the fear that they might fucking attack me. Um, And then uh, they're playing fucking video games. I shit you not. They're playing fucking video games on the street. And I can only guess 
that their parents have kicked them out because they're fucking losers. And they said, I don't need anything but my fucking video games. They walked out of the house with the fucking video game in one arm, the monitor in the other. They went to that exact spot and uh, 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 plugged it in. Absolute bullshit. You filthy fucking assholes. Go get a job. You walk by. Hey, got any money? Yeah, I do. Fuck face. So do you. Go sell your GD fucking uh, PlayStation, asshole. I walked over to the comic shop. Want to go shop for comics? I'm not going to buy anything. I just want to see what's up. I love these uh, little shops like that. And, um, Aram, if you're not going to pay attention, Jesus, I told you that they had plugs right there on the street. You just plugged it in. Why do you got to get bogged down by the fucking details? Tyler says Vault of Midnight. Exactly. I go walking into Vault of Midnight or I get to the damn door and, uh, it, they're in there. It's open. And it says open till 8. Now look at the watch or the iPhone. It's it's 7.59. Fuck me. Turn around. Walk back. The gauntlet of filthy homeless people. And uh, that was just terrible. Off we go to Cold Stone Creamery. Way across town. It's awesome. Have a great time. Uh, while I'm there... Uh, Ben Glaze. Now, I'm not even going to get into that. I'll get into that later. That was the night. It was great. And then I got home, went to bed. By the time I get there, uh, or once I get in bed, I'm instantly annoyed and fuck. Man, did that piss me off. No sleep till Brooklyn. Holy shit. It is hot as hell in the UK right now. Uh, I think it's like uh, 12.30, maybe 1 p.m. over there right now. They've already set a record for heat. And uh, everybody's making a massive deal out of this. It's like, um, it's so hot. Did you see the image of the Queen's Guard? And I'm like, what a fucking catastrophe this is. The Queen's Guard is the guy that stands outside of the palace or whatever, and he's got the... This, uh, you know, long sleeve red coat and the stupid hat. Oh, if it were 10 below zero, this guy would be sweating his balls off. Uh, side note, Brandis says, did we ever find out what pissed him off? No, I, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't, I don't need to tell you that. That's it's, it's a long story that I, I just care not to get into. You don't want to know. Trust me. You don't want to know what pissed me off. We're moving on. Uh, The fact that this poor son of a bitch has to stand out there and wear that. And it's in England. Did you know that like uh, uh, 98% of the people in England do not have air conditioning? I guess it isn't, it's so uncommon to have temperatures like this there that it's like, oh, we don't need it. And fuck, man. They are saying that thousands of people could die in England. Talk about how is it that you're this underprepared? I mean, this is a nation that survived like 60 straight nights of bombing by the Germans in the early 1940s. And a, and, a, and a heat wave is going to kill all of these people. They're talking about um, the uh, railroads, like the actual uh, uh, tracks are only uh, able to handle being uh, used when the temperature is 95 degrees or below. And that if the temperature is above that, the actual metal and the tracks could burn buckle and cause a train derailment i am not making it up runways have melted what the hell 
It is an absolute shit show disaster in England right now. As it is extremely warm. Now, here, it's obviously not... Uh, that's nothing that we're... What, what we have today, temps in the high 80s, no big deal. I mean, it was hot. I, hell, I took it over to the uh, track at the high school yesterday for the workout. And, oh, my God, was that a bitch. Because on the track, it was about... It felt much hotter than what the air temperature was. I could feel it through my fucking shoes as I was running. And uh, that was a that was a bitch. Oh, and then the um, the local high school football team is out there, and I'm like, I didn't realize that they start this early. It is it's July 19th. I don't even think the NFL is practicing, and we've got the the local high school football team out here. I'm like, I can't think of anything that is uh, 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 less appealing in my life. People always give young people a bad rap. And they don't have work ethic or anything. I disagree completely. Because you got probably 150 kids out there. From like the ninth grade team all the way up to the varsity. All on the field. Um, and they're it's hot as shit. And they're out there practicing. And uh, I, I've seen these people for years. The same coaching staff has been there. And I'm um, like, they see me coming. They go, oh, God, he looks like fuck. He's fat as shit this year. And I'm like, hey, coach, how are you? And they're like, hey, good to see you. How you doing? I go, I'm fat, I'm slow, and I'm old. Ain't we all? All right, guys, let's get back after it. Jesus, I don't know how they do that. And these kids, none of them drop. It's fantastic. Uh, all right. We are off and running on the Eric Zane Show podcast. So glad that you are here. And if you are watching on Twitch, I'm sorry, if you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, I'm about to say goodbye to you now. You must leave me. But if you want to continue the show, okay, you got to go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live. Rob says, remember when Eric almost got into a fight with the players years ago? Uh, you're getting that very hazy. Your 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 remembering is is fuzzy. They weren't players. They were kids playing football, and the fucker threw a football at me. But still, yes, I wanted to kick their ass. Holy shit! All right. Anyway, go to Twitch twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. You can get the rest of the show. Uh, also, download the show wherever you download podcasts. Eric Zane Show, if you want the audio podcast, whenever you want. Okay, so for the rest of you, I'm going to say goodbye to you now, I think. In theory, yes, goodbye. All right, now we're together. Just us here on Twitch. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the show on Patreon. If you've supported in the past or are continuing to support now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're awesome. You're awesome. Let's see. Am I forgetting anything? Nope. Yeah, late start today. Um, it, it, I just wasn't ready. Everything was wonky. Okay, you know, losing fitness, gaining weight, that all hurts a person mentally. Honest to God, that can affect your relationships. It's time to turn this thing around. I want to help you feel better. And all you have to do is decide that you want to try. I want you to try this as you're trying to turn things around. It's the FitBod app. This thing is amazing. You don't need a ton of weights to do this. You can do it in your home with no weights. You can do it in the middle of nowhere like I do at Fear Bunker North. You can do it at the gym. The workouts are tailored to what you have to work with. And my gosh, they work everything. Muscles, cardiovascular system, you name it. It's time to turn it around, and I want you to do it by using the FitBod app. One of the important things about FitBod is the algorithm changes, which, you know, those are words that's kind of like above my pay grade, but it senses and knows when you're improving as you work out and updates your fitness plan as you go so that you're not like stagnating and things like that and 
plateauing. FitBot has figured it out and all you have to do for less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer, you can get a full year of personalized workouts with FitBot. It integrates with your Apple Watch, Wear OS, SmartWatch, and apps like Apple Health, Fitbit, and Strava. Man, this is incredible. You can crush your summer fitness goals with personalized workouts from FitBot that improve as you do. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at FitBot.me slash Zane. It's got to be FitBot.me dot m e slash zane try it out and see for yourself 25 percent off your subscription or try it free at fitbod dot m e slash zane fitbod uh, update on our beloved daisy who i think yeah she's down here right now o'neill is i got three in here daisy um she went to the vet yesterday And they took one look at her and they're like, yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, This won't be nearly as gross, I promise, as yesterday. Um, That what had happened was these two little glands, and I don't know the function of these things on the animal. They're called the anal glands or on either side of the dog's butthole. I think it has to do with when they go caca, those things express themselves and they leave a scent. And that's an animal thing, I guess. So you'll know it when your dog expresses these things and it's not like, and they're not like outside. It's a very bizarre smell, not like feces, but just weird and unpleasant. So hers got uh, backed up and um, that's what we discovered the other day when that, well, we had what happened. It was a very disgusting, terrible story, but, uh, we take her to the vet. They shaved her ass and they said, yeah, okay. And they, they did their best to uh, clean that area as best they could, send her home with some antibiotics. And then they said to me, now, it's also important, Eric, um, that this does not scab up because th- what's in there needs to leave her body. So uh, we are uh, giving you a new job, Eric. What is that? Uh, every uh, every so often, you got to get an antibiotic wipe and um, uh, wipe off the uh, stink chum flying out of this open wound on your dog. And, well, that was horrible. Remember when I said this wasn't going to be gross? I lied to you. Because um, we have a new material that might be one of the grossest things you can ever lay eye uh, lay eyes on and that was what was coming out of this open wound and oh fuck this black jelly like tar that smells like death warmed over uh you you haven't lived until you've done this and uh kenny you're right having an animal is gross as fuck um, she is on antibiotics and the swelling has gone down. It doesn't look nearly as wonky. In fact, I sent a picture of it to Kenny. I took a close up picture of this and, and sent it his way. And I, um, uh, I should probably share it with you now. All right, there you go. That's that's a close up of of the of the ass, and that dark spot in the middle is where that chum would come flying off. Okay, so I sent this to Kenny because I knew that it would gross him out. That is Daisy's seeping ass meat on the dog. Chris says, not looking. Remember when I said this was not going to be gross? Tyler adds, Eric can now write off this vet bill because he's describing Daisy's anal seepage on the show. Exactly. Uh, Brandis says, oh my God, stop calling it ass meat chum. (laughs) I have been blessed with the ability to say gross things and get a reaction. And I learned long ago, it doesn't matter what the reaction is. If I'm talking and I'm getting a reaction, 
That's a memory. If I've created a memory, I'm winning the war. So it doesn't matter what I pull out of you. Happy, sad, uh, uh, whatever, anger, uh, puke, winner. Uh, all right. I th- honestly, when Brandis writes, your descriptive words are too much. I get, I, I get great joy in knowing that that happened. Damn, does that make me happy? <sighs> All right, but she's okay. That's good. That is good. Okay, moving on from the personal updates. Uh, I have uh, a story that I want to share that I was going. I've been meaning, I've been kicking this can down the road. And uh, I, I finally am now getting it uh, months ago. Well, maybe a couple months ago that that, that gigantic kid uh, named uh, Black Hodor went on to that ride at Icon Park in Florida. And he actually didn't fit on the ride. It, it, it's a type of ride that has like a molded seat. One size fits all. And you sit back in the molded seat, and then the thing comes down over you, the uh, thing that holds you in, and uh, you're good to go. Well, he's so big, he doesn't fit in the molded part of the seat, so there's a lot of space between his his back and the actual seat. Um, that's not correct. The thing comes down over him, doesn't matter. There's a problem with how he's fitting into the seat because he's too fucking large. I think Black Hodor was like six foot nine, no bullshit, like 380 pounds, and he's a kid. Well, uh, despite that superpower, the ride goes way up, and then it's just supposed to free fall, and he falls out of it and falls to his death. That's it. Icon Park in trouble. Uh, Okay, that was a weird story. Terrible, terrible story. Uh, The kid is not... In the video, you actually hear him go plop on the ground and people are just standing there like, oh, fuck. It's one of the worst things on the planet. He was moving so fast, you didn't even see him hardly. He just went flying right through the frame. Well, now Icon Park is uh, is in the spotlight again, and I don't know if this is warranted. Um, I think that sometimes people can get a little too sensitive when it comes to... Um, shootings you know i mean whenever uh there's a uh a, any type of s- school shooting or mass shooting which by the way did you see the one in uh, indianapolis where the kid went to the uh, uh mall and then in the bathroom he assembles the rifle and he goes all right it's time to time to take care of business and he comes flying out of there and he starts killing people and then some dude who happened to be shopping there pulled out his piece and uh, licensed pistol holder and shot the fucker in the head and killed him before he could kill anybody else. And that kid who brought that pistol in there, he was allowed to have a concealed weapon. However, the mall had a sign that said, no one can bring a gun in here. Like, that's going to stop anybody, you know? All those things do, those gun-free zones, is, um, you know, make it more advantageous for the sickos who want to kill people. Uh, if I owned a mall or a school, I would call the school or the gun guns. Welcome here. School or guns. Welcome here. Mall. Uh, gun free zones are a joke. I bring this up because at icon park, they have a new shooting game and everybody is fucking furious. And this is ridiculous. That they're furious because it looks awesome. What they do is they 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 put you in this tower above the park, and you've got these lasers with um like telescopes uh, on them, and and uh, you got to try to hit the targets throughout the park from this high vantage point. So it's almost like you're reenacting the fucking Jason Aldean concert in Las Vegas. 
Um, I mean, honestly, if you really want to have fun, it uh, you should have it so that the people coming into the park, they can get in free or get half off if they wear a Target shirt. Uh, that, I think, would make this even more acceptable and awesome. Is And then you get points, you know? And uh, if you have, like, a baby in a stroller and the baby's wearing the Target, since the, the child is so small and your laser gun hits them, you're going to get, like, double points for that. You see what I mean? You see where I'm going with this? They, here, look at this happy couple here. They're playing the game. And everybody is pissed off about this game. And I say dive in and, and get more involved in the game. Double da- Triple down on this game. This is a great game. I would love this game. Uh, They're facing heavy criticism after announcing their new target blasting game that can be played on one of its rides. Um, Icon Park announced Thursday be adding a game called Bullseye Blast to the wheel ride. That is the park's 400-foot-tall Ferris wheel. So you're in the Ferris wheel blasting blasting away at targets. It's great. It's described as a competition for riders to use laser blasters to hit targets placed around Orlando that can be seen from the ride. So you're that high up in this giant Ferris wheel. And, you know, in the distance, you can see uh, an abortion clinic. And there you just have at it and score points. Uh, Ladies walking in there to get abortions. You shoot them with the laser and you get points. Some of this might be made up. I might be adding different variables that are not actually in the story. Uh, Quote, as their air-conditioned capsule ascends above Orlando, players scan the rooftops of Icon Park to find 50 strategically pre-selected targets with varying degrees of difficulty. To get the highest score possible, players need to hit as many of these as possible with their laser blaster during the 18-minute ride. I would love this. According to the release posted on Icon Park's website, each player will be given a blaster, which has a scope and an infrared on them to assist when aiming at the targets. Now, the usual assholes. See, here's the problem. Um, People who have been victims of this type of violence, like at Parkland, they're like pissed off that this game exists because they think now that because the bad guy shot up their school, anything involving any type of toy means that uh, uh, we love mass murderers and it couldn't be further from the truth. That's a horrible way of looking at the world. The bullseye blast game costs five ninety five to play. What a bargain. In addition to the price of a ticket to ride the wheel, I would absolutely do this. In its announcement, Icon Park said the ride is the only observation wheel in the world to provide this amazing new infrared technology and effectively gamify and reinvigorate the experience to an entirely new audience of gamers. You know who has to be in full support of this? Rick from TC Paintball. Because uh, what he does for a living um, could also be looked at with a raised eyebrow if you want to be an asshole. But you shouldn't because that's fucking fun. Any asshole who says that video games or gamifying the ride or paintball... Uh, makes people a mass murderer, needs to actually be a victim of a mass murderer. There, I said it. Uh, The bullseye blast announcement was not posted to Icon Park's official social media pages, uh, but was picked up by Laughing Place, a blog dedicated to theme park news. When the article was posted to Twitter, users were quick to take issue with the park's new game. That's great news for Icon Park. And now idiots like me are talking about it. And now you know. Some calling the game insensitive. Go fucking shit, it's insensitive. And referring to it as this is a mass shooting simulator. Everything about this is terrible. The concept. The execution and the timing, one person wrote. Who approved this? This is incredibly tone deaf. Eat shit. However, some argues, uh, some users argue the backlash seemed a bit over the top. 
I struggle to see how a laser shooting game is insensitive. Should we ban laser tag, airsoft, and paintball? Because those resemble guns too? Thank you. Some users asked, uh, how much more bad press does this park need? Referring to the death of Black Hodor. Yeah, if I'm Icon Park, I, I lean in and say, from the people who brought you this moment, we bring you this moment. All right. So there you go. Uh, Kyle says we should ban we should ban guns because they look like guns. I think he's being sarcastic. Uh, Josh writes, I mean, come on. The dirt people carnival that just came through my town still lets kids have BB guns and shoot on their midway to try to win a stuffed banana, and they should. Hell, I was taking a, the dogs for a walk the other day, and the kids were running around with um, each kid. They're all like eight and under. One kid had like a uh, a, a, a a fake toy machine gun, like an shape like shape like an M16. I'm like, where the fuck did you get that? I don't even think you can get that anywhere. Uh, and the other kids had like airsofts and pistols. They're shooting each other, and they get, it's great. I'm like, yes, of course, that, that's fun. I'm just waiting for some asshole neighbor to call on him and say, "Oh my god, fuck, this is terrible." Pussy ass people need to realize guns aren't going away. Neither are gun type games. It's like if Duck Hunt never came out years ago and suddenly did today, these people would lose their minds. That's a very red state approach to this, Kenny. I'm impressed. All right. I want Icon Park to change the name of this to Mass Murder. Just to lean in. I have a very special guest joining me in a little bit that I'm really impressed with. It's a member of the audience. Someone you all know is joining me. Uh, he hasn't, he is not part um, of this uh, 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 mob that exists right now. Amongst the audience that seems to be petering out to some degree. I don't know if they just are running out of things to bitch about, but uh, a long time listener. And I'm excited to bring him in because I'm very proud of what this listener has accomplished. But for until then, I got to catch up on some ads. So hang tight. The open and live stream. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. First of all, join me on Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Thank you so much if you've been a supporter in the past or thinking about it now. Five or ten bucks a month. Oh, Bruce! Quit it! He's humping Daisy. Leave her alone! Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. The open and live stream brought to you by Blue Frost IT. The managed IT service provider of the show. Uh, 616-285-50. They're awesome. They can help you with any of your tech issues for a small or medium-sized business. Get your oil and any type of lubricants from JM Synthetics. AMS oil is the best in the business. Bruce, they invented synthetic motor oil. If you want to order, go to the website jmsynthetics.com. There's a phone number there if you want to talk to the man himself, Jason Mays, 616-747-0233. I encourage you just to call him or text him anyway, just to say hi. He's a wonderful soul. I appreciate his help. Uh, my policy shop insurance, Frank Fuss, is going to get you insured. 616-914-4070, Um so, like, you know, you're buying insurance in the marketplace, Obamacare. Frank's going to help you with that. He's a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker and um, can make your life very easy, and he's free. Everything he does is free, and he's also the Medicare Advantage plan expert. If you or someone you know or love is getting ready to take advantage of the Medicare system. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And we got com. Yes. We got comedy at fullhousecomedy.com. Let's bring in running Joe Morin. Hey, Eric. How's it going, Eric? Hello. As promised and on time, how are you, Joe Morin? Good. How are you, Eric Zane? Never better. I, uh, you're, you're back to work after an incredible adventure that you just recently went on. And Diana mentioned this to me. She saw it on your Facebook. And I said, this is such a remarkable feat that I, I mean, this, this has to happen. That's when I immediately reached out to you about talking about the Tridge to Bridge Run, Joe. Yeah. The Tridge is a structure in Midland, Michigan, where I used to live. It's a, it's a bridge with uh, three um, paths meeting at the center. And that was the start of this adventure. And it's a, you're looking at a ultra running uh, event that takes you from that place all the way to the Mackinac bridge, which is over 240 miles. Correct. That is correct. (laughs) Holy fuck. Congratulations (laughs) to you, Joe. I, I mean, seriously now tell everybody because the average person might think, well, he did this, and this is your um, unassisted, right? You have to do this alone. That's correct. Fully self-supported. Okay, no, like, uh, pace car, and no one showing up to give you supplies. That's correct. All right. But there is a caveat. Yeah. We can, there is angel, uh, they call them angel houses or angel coolers. Yeah. And people that lived along the route or worked along the route and knew about the race but were not involved with the race, so they couldn't be family or friends or anything like that. Yep, yep. Could could provide anonymous um, support in that way if they if they so felt desired. Okay, got that. So now most people listening might think, well, this sounds like two hundred and forty miles by foot, running, walking, crawling, whatever. Um, When Diana mentioned it to me, I was thinking of a certain number of days in the double digits to get there. Um, How long did this take you, Joe Morin? Uh, Exactly. It took me four days, 10 hours, 39 minutes, and 22 seconds. Joe, that is an amazing amazing feat and i am i am blown away by hearing that you're averaging roughly 60 miles a day yes um yes on average yes take me through it buddy i mean there had to be um i mean first of all to be so prepared to be able to pull that off is exceptional but um take me through some of the things that stand out to you that are like oh i can't wait to tell somebody this story so you know that last year i attempted it and i made a wrong turn okay and then um i got defeated and i i did not complete it last year yeah yeah it took you off the path Uh uh-huh i remember that What's that? Yeah, I, I remember that. It, it screwed everything up for you. Right. Right. So so this year, my main focus was that mile marker, which was 155. And I needed to get to that and make that correct turn. And once I did that, everything just kind of started to fall into place for me. And it, I mean, it was a struggle. And there was times the last day I really wanted to quit, but I was almost there. So why would I quit? Jesus. Uh, (laughs) A question for you. Audience members are asking questions. Uh, Aram says, where do you carry changes of clothes, food, toilet paper, or go to the bathroom? So I was wearing a seven liter backpack. So I just carried seven liters worth of equipment basically um 
I had a, a small roll of toilet paper in there for for the duties. Yeah. Um, I had one one change of socks, and I did not I did not change my underwear, my shorts, or my shirt. Uh, there's rumors that um, people talk. I think it was you actually. Rumors. Uh, that you, if you need to sleep, about can you take people through what you had to do to sleep? Because you actually did sleep, right? Yes, I I probably averaged maybe three or four hours um, each time I would sleep at uh, night. Um, the so the first night I slept on a gas station sidewalk with a space blanket over me. And then I got kicked out at 4.30 in the morning by the opening manager. <laughs> so he, he wakes you up and says, hey, man, you can't be here. Was he, what, was he, was he confused? It, it was actually a lady, and she, she asked me, quote, what are you doing here, darling? And I told her, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. And, okay. So, um, what about any other uh, scenarios of sleep? Any odd places that are worth talking about? So the second night, I was up in Alpena, and I missed. I missed being able. I was going to check into a hotel. I missed being able to check into a hotel, and they had some pallets lined wood pallets lined up along their their fence. I laid a couple of down, a couple of them down. I laid on that with a space blanket over me. <laughs> when you're wow, when you're that tired after such, it's is it uh, is it hard to fall asleep or is it just is it just as soon as you close your eyes, you're just done? Um, it once I get comfortable. Um, but the hard part is I want to try to sleep on my side, but things dig in. So I guess try to just sleep on my back and, and you just, yeah, you just pass out for a couple hours. <laughs> uh, question for you. How do you recover between running segments? Does he take, does, does Joe take any pain meds, rub his legs? Uh, take us through that, Joe. Um, so this year I, I had some Tylenol and some ibuprofen with me and, I didn't really start using them until uh, like the second day, um, but yeah, you, you just you just try to get off your legs once in a while. Um, you know, if I got super tired, I would just take a ditch nap. <laughs> okay, so that's wherever you can lay your head. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it was in somebody's driveway. When you uh, emerge from that slumber. Um, do you still, I mean, is, is there like, you actually feel, uh, ready to go or is it like constantly snowballing on itself? The fatigue where you just don't want to actually do it. No, I, I was on a mission. So I would, I would have my alarm set. And once that alarm went off, I would, I would, uh, turn it off and I'm, I'm up and going and, um, and when when I've finished any distance race to, to see the finish line, it's always like you're very proud or if it's a 5K or a one-mile run or a 10K, whatever it is, a pre- it's always quite a thing. I can't imagine what seeing that finish, like, finish line was like as you came to the end of this race, Joe. Oh, it, it, was, uh, it was pretty awesome. I actually posted a video of me finishing on, on my Facebook page and I, you, you start seeing the bridge, the Mackinac bridge. And yeah. I knew I was so close and I was able to, I, I guess in my mind, sprint to the finish line at the end of the 240 miles. Dude, seriously. Now was, uh, were any members of your beautiful family there to see you? Yes, my beautiful wife Tracy was there. Uh, I think she was cheering the loudest. 
And uh, that was pretty awesome. Oh, my God, dude. This is just the best. It makes me so happy. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of you. So is everybody. I mean, uh, Thank you. it's just, it's just a, a, quite a feat. Um, I can only imagine the small number of people in the world who've been successful at this. I mean, we're looking at a really, really, really small percentage of people. Yes. Um, so this is uh, the organizer. It's it's an unofficial event, but there's an organizer. And he's completed it the last three years. Um, the first year, he had two finishers. Last year, he had two finishers. And this year, seven out of seven finished. Only seven people did the race. Seven people did this one this year, yes. So um, that means those other years, like uh, maybe a few more started, but like you ran out of gas and just couldn't make it. So this is this is a tough one. Holy fuck. Now, this is the type of thing that it draws people from all over the place. As I mean, because you said that more and more people are going to start to do this. Um, if you put the task in front of an ultra marathoner, they're, they're bound to try it at some point. Do you think that this one is as tough or tougher than some of the big ones, like any of those Western States runs? Oh, um, I, I can't compare to Western States cause I've never ran Western States. Okay. Um, I know that's a tough one. Um, there's the bad water, uh, 135. That's a, that's a brutal one too. So a lot of people don't know what we're talking about, but out West, uh, there's a lot of these mountain runs like, uh, Leadville and things like that. But I, uh, right. my God, it's just an incredible, incredible, uh, feat. Hey man, I, thanks for taking the time. I mean, how, how were the legs after that? I mean, uh, I understand you're in peak physical form, but, uh, how did they feel the next day? Uh, they, they felt pretty good. My feet are swollen. Um, and I have a few blisters to deal with, but other than that, uh, by this weekend, I'm, I'll probably be out running another 10 miles or something. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, what, what do you do for a living again, Joe? Um, I'm an electrician. Okay, buddy. Well, uh, very, very happy for you. Great effort. And uh, I, I I can't wait to keep following, seeing what your next big adventure is. Is there another goal in mind? What do you do after that? Uh, so in September, I have a 50-miler. Um, and then next year, around Memorial Day, I'm going to do uh, the Veterans Memorial 150-mile uh, race to commemorate uh, veterans. Holy fuck. That is, that's exciting. That's great. But they, they still sound uh, like nothing compared to what you just pulled off. That's true. <laughs> All right, Joe, everybody loves your story. Okay, buddy, have a good rest of your day at work. I appreciate you taking the time. All right, thank you so much, Eric Zane. Have a good one. Talk to you down the road. Joe Morin right there. Woo! One of you could not stop. I mean, I make fun of Joe all the time. Hey, it's me, Joe Warren. I, I do that all the time. Chris was that guy this time. Fucking Chris. All he could do was say, oh, what? hey, tell him to say Dave's not here. Jesus. Smoking Joe Warren. Legend. Very, very cool. Pushing the limits. Uh, Chris says, I said one thing for fuck's sake. You did not say one thing. Let's back up. The first thing you said was, have to admit, not a fan of this guy's voice. Doesn't get, can't really go much lower than that. I just want to say to Joe, say Dave's not here. I And then you're right. I posted a picture of myself finishing on my face. Book page. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Sorry, Chris. That was Corey. 
who said, not a fan of this dude's voice. Fuck me. Sorry, Chris. You see, the problem is when I see it on your end, you're both like in the color purple. Your stupid names. And they both start with a C and I can't read. God, I'm terrible. Shut up, Corey. You're the asshole then. And I'm the asshole for saying Chris is the asshole. Fuck. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Change your color. All right. I got to pee. It's getting, uh, it's sweltering in here. Holy shit, is it warm. And I've got the air on. Okay. Thank you, as uh, as always, to A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. They're fantastic. Get your furnace checked up, installed, scheduled maintenance, whatever it may be. A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. All right. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. No matter where you are in the U.S., reach out to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage to get a mortgage. Interest rates are going up. You might have some credit card debt. Uh, It's time to get rid of that. Get the money out of your house because the credit card debt is 25% interest. That fucking sucks. Uh, Pay off what you borrow on a low interest rate by using your home. Pay off the debt, and then, you know, you're saving money in the much lower interest rate that you're paying on that principal. Do it with Mario, 231-332-6505. Don't go anywhere. I got to pee, and uh, I got to get a fan in here because it's just too hot. So I got to go air condi- two air conditioners on and a fan. Shit. Okay, I'll be right back. Up until yesterday, I didn't know what a, a, a Glock switch was. I guess... It's a device that you can take up uh, the standard particular pistol. And I don't know if it works on every pistol. If it does work on every pistol, well, I got to get one. Because you put it on your pistol and your pistol turns into a machine gun. Fuck yes. Yes. No, I I wouldn't I wouldn't get one. It's a felony, you know. You're not supposed to have this. The bad guys are getting these fucking things. And you put this little piece of shit part on the back of the slide on your pistol. And then, you know, you get an ultra big magazine that has like 33 rounds in it and it goes It's insane. And some fucking loser locally uh, has been making these at home with a 3D printer and selling them to other idiots. Uh, this is this is incredible. Uh, let's kind of unpack this thing. Check this out. It's a small device, but criminals are using them to wreak massive devastation. They're called Glock switches, and they turn semi-automatic pistols into machine guns that can unload 33 rounds in two seconds with the pull of the trigger. New tonight, Target 8 investigator Susan Samples discovered federal agents seized the illegal devices from a home right here in West Michigan. Blackmore Road in the heart of Ravenna. The feds say a company this house. led them here to the home of Zebulon Timothy Nestor. Holy shit, look at this guy. My God. There, this is proof that aliens exist amongst us. What a, what a crazy look. Look at those fucking ears. Released from prison in January after doing time related to a shooting at a Kentwood party. Inside the 26-year-old's Ravenna home on July 1st, ATF agents said they found handguns, long guns, several Glock switches, and a 3D printer the feds believe Nestor used to create the illegal conversion devices, which, according to the informant, Nestor was trying to sell. Law-abiding citizens are not buying these. Retired ATF agent Brian Lukey. As somebody with a Glock switch can put it on their Glock in easily less than a minute. And they've converted their gun into a machine gun. Lutke says criminals started to import the untraceable deadly devices from China about a decade ago. 
They're everywhere. How many have been imported? Nobody knows. What police? Wow! Look at that. Switches are killing them. This was Houston, September of Watch last this. year. Watch this. Houston police. Let's do this. Thing. <laughs> The machine gun fire made possible by a Glock switch killed one officer and wounded another. Oh, no. This is the device. This is an auto switch. It's approximately an inch that sticks off the uh, rear of the slide. 33 rounds in Look less than two seconds. What you have then is a uh, the ability to shoot dozens of rounds in seconds. Grand Rapids Police Chief Eric Winstrom saw the carnage the conversion devices wrought at his last job. The collateral damage of just unintended consequences of killing innocent people is what I saw at my previous city in Chicago. Winstrom says while police have seized Glock switches during arrests in Grand Rapids, he's not aware of their use in shootings. ATF agent Lutke fears it's just a matter of time, oh, especially yeah. now that agents found the devices in West Michigan. Yeah, some, some piece of shit loser with giant ears is making them in a shithole house on an inexpensive device and selling them to other losers my god in the home of an ex-con on a street that looks like any other in small town west michigan it is going to that's that's a bad thing for west michigan that it looks like any other be catastrophic if gang members have them and there's a rival gang shooting and they're shooting at each other, there will be innocent people hit as well. This is a perfect example of how, you know, the bad guys will get their hands on the things that they're not supposed to have in order to wreak havoc. Oops tonight charged federally at this point with being a felon in possession of a firearm just possessing a glock switch even if it's not connected to a gun can get you 10 years in prison 40 members of congress recently urged the atf to take stronger action against glock switches i reached out to glock itself for comment today but did not hear back brian do you know the fastest growing yes i do so um i guess it only works on that uh that type of weapon a glock but jesus whoa taking any handgun and turning it into a machine gun holy shit uh just a fucking disaster probably probably uh better off to just uh start the war now and get rid of all guns that are out there If they said all guns are illegal, I will be the first in line to hand over my weapons. I can appreciate that. And then we take all guns, grind them up, and then they're gone. And it, then we go house to house and kick in doors. And this is how this is the Eric Zane presidential war that I will promise, if elected. Um, you've heard about the war on drugs. That was bullshit. This is the war on weapons. If elected, every American will give me every gun. I will even take the Red Rider BB gun. And there will be millions dead in my war. But in the end, there will be no more guns. And I'm starting with listeners of the Eric Zane Show podcast, like Sam the Jew, who you can tell he has plenty of guns because he says, you want a bloodbath? Yes, that is my goal. I will start by saying, if elected, I will create a mass casualty event where everyone who has a gun will be destroyed if they refuse to give it up. And then, um, like Corey says, the Japanese guy made his own gun. Well, then we will destroy everything that can make a gun. That's the only way to do this. I am abolishing all metal if elected. I will have all guns destroyed and all people who won't give them up, they will also be destroyed and then metal will be destroyed and that is what we will do going forward. That is the only way we can keep the world safe here in the United States is uh, the Eric Zane Show gun and metal abolishment plan. What do you think? Probably not, I realize. 
My God, that is weird, though. That, that Glock switch, just put the stupid thing on, and then boom, you got a machine gun. I at least want to try it. I've never fired a machine gun in my life. All right. So this story, this lady had been in, uh, in a coma for like two years. Um, she was a victim of a violent crime. Uh, police found her, and she had been like attacked brutally with a hatchet and someone had like hit her numerous times. And so a tremendous amount of blood loss and they thought that she was dead. And, but then they realized minutes later, Oh my God, she's there. She's actually breathing. She survived and they, she lived, but she was in a coma for two years and, uh, she just woke up and then she woke up and then she said, Oh my God, my brother did this. And they're like, oh, what? And like, yeah, it was my brother. And then they went, well, go get the brother. So then they went and arrested the fuck. And this is incredible. Uh, Jesus, the, the fact that she comes and they're like, hey, what happened to you two years ago? My brother tried to kill me. He hit me with a fucking hatchet. They thought she was dead. She was up on a bad sofa, feeling about that. But then they we'll start the whole thing over again. Pulling twist in a long, painful journey for one West Virginia woman. Police say that Wanda Palmer woke up from a two-year coma after being attacked by a hatchet with a hatchet in 2020. And she identified her older brother as the perpetrator. CNN's Jean Casares joins us. Jean, this is a fascinating story, to put it lightly. It is unbelievable. So when law enforcement got to the home of Wanda Palmer, what they said was, and I quote, they said she was attacked, hacked, and left for dead. They thought she was dead. She was upright in her sofa, but then they noticed shallow breathing. So they rushed her to the hospital. She was alive, but she was in a coma. And two years ago, law enforcement said there was a witness that said that they thought they saw her brother on the front porch the midnight before she was discovered, but they had no... Look at the brother. Holy shit. Last time I saw something that fucked up, it was someone riding a motorcycle. Surveillance video. They had no phone records. They had no eyewitnesses at all. Well, two weeks ago, the care facility where Wanda was called up law enforcement and said, she is waking up. You can talk to her. Law enforcement went there and she told them it was my brother that did this to me. They have never found a weapon. They believe it was a hatchet or an axe, but they have charged Daniel Palmer the third with attempted murder and malicious wounding. But here's the thing, Caitlin, there's always another side, right? And we have reached out for a defense attorney and we've reached out to the public defender's office, but this is two years old. She could not carry on a conversation. She could just answer yes or no questions. And so the defense is going to look at how she was questioned if they prodded her and coerced her into saying this. But on the other hand, if she wakes up and it's one of the first things she says in law, it's called an excited utterance. And there is trustworthiness when someone does that. So this will be interesting to, ca to follow this case. Yeah, and that they never found the weapon. Very have interesting. Not. Gene, we'll stick with you on it. Thank you so much. Brother, actually, he didn't do it. The, the, the lady comes out of the coma and she said, oh, I thought you said... <laughs> Uh, whose dick do I want to suck? Oh, God, no. That, but that dude, look at him. Holy shit. Ooh, man. <clears throat> what a scene. Chris says, upright on her sofa with a hatchet stuck in her head. No, no, no. They, they never found the weapon. Josh says, she told him, we're going to take your guns. And he said, oh, yeah, you're going to take my hatchet, too? My God. <laughs> Tyler writes, what a knifing, LOL. Eh, you know, whatever. <clears throat> okay. That is incredible. Uh, Kylie Jenner is in the news. And I don't, this isn't normally something that I would talk about, but... Uh, Something kind of struck me about this. It's an article because um, on the show, The Kardashians, one of the things that I guess is interesting is how amazed and shocked that 
uh, Kylie Jenner and Kylie's mother, Chris R., when they go out and do, like, normal things that you and I would do, like going to the grocery store or getting a car wash. And so basically what they're, they're, they've done is they've been able to make a show and generate content by uh, showing them uh, so impressed with the way the actual world is because they, they don't live the world like we do because these are some of the wealthiest people on the planet. Uh, back in May, Kylie Jenner and her mom, Chris, sparked fierce backlash when they were filmed going to a supermarket in the Kardashians. The mother-daughter daughter duo were practically giddy with excitement as they relished pushing their cart full of groceries, paying at a checkout counter, and loading their purchases into their car. Now, I'm going to tell you why that is a winner. Because um, it's the whole fact that they cannot relate to what normal people do. And we all, as reasonably normal people, see that wonderment in something so simple as that, um, that that's fucking funny. Me, me just reading it, and see, I didn't see the show, but me just reading it and seeing the images, that's fantastic. And it, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what you draw out of a person. Disgust, anger, happiness, funny, doesn't matter as long as they're watching. And they are, obviously. Uh, Amanda says, I saw this. It was funny as hell. Amanda says they're one of my guilty pleasures. The other one is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And that's because we love to see how these people interact with whatever. Their surroundings, with each other, the ridiculousness of them. Uh, Didn't Paris Hilton do something like this? Wouldn't surprise me. I guess I don't know. But this family is just a recipe. Talk about... Um, their wealth is immeasurable, but when you can basically just go to the store and buy something and generate a load of people to watch it, that I'm so envious of that. That is terrific. Um, yeah. In, in fact, here in that same show where they are getting their car washed and, um, in that thing, they later comp- uh, compared a drive through car wash to Disneyland and called it such a tourist attraction. The scenes left some viewers feeling uncomfortable with billionaire Kylie finding novelty in such everyday activities being used as, quote, an example of her, her extreme privilege. Now, I hate the word privilege. Okay. Um, I hate it when people uh, earn and then it's looked down upon because they earned the Kardashians have made so much money because they've done interesting shit that the world loves. How the fuck can you, can you chastise them over that? Chastise the people who care about them and enjoy watching it. They're not doing anything wrong. Who gives a fuck? And if they're uh, amazed by being able to go to the store and buy eggs, that's content. The storyline had followed an episode where Kylie's sister, Kendall Jenner, famously struggled to slice her own cucumber. Look at the form here on this cucumber. (laughs) She's so doing it wrong. That's interesting to me. Kenny says, I couldn't tell you a single thing about them. I can't either, but I'm more impressed, amazed with the people who do watch, and they obviously do. Look at that. What an, she has no idea what the fuck she's doing. I'm going somewhere with this. Just stay with me. I'm taking my time and explaining this. The storyline followed an episode where Kylie's sister, Kendall, famously struggled to slice her own cucumber, which had sparked another conversation about growing up in vast wealth. I love that Kylie and Kendall are out of touch with reality to the point where they have to have a day to do normal things like grocery store in person and cutting their own cucumbers, one person tweeted at the time. Yes, of course. That's why people watch. 
Kylie and Chris going to the grocery store and checking out and filling their cart as an experience is the most white, rich, privileged thing I've seen. So what? Another added. If you have everything done for you, and they do, and I would too, to suddenly go out and do what us normal fucks do, that's entertainment. These people need something to do. When you have everything in the world, they come back to the pack to do what we do for entertainment. That's awesome. Um, that's a recipe to, uh, for a show because, you know, you get these people doing shit, fish out of water, whatever, playing paintball at Rick's. It would be great. I thought, quote, the day of normal errands with Chris and Kylie would be cute, but it's so gross. Disagree. We know they're out of touch. We don't need to see just how out of touch. Bullshit. Shut up, you fucking pussy. Just because you feel bad that uh, you have to live your life that way and that they're in, they're amazed with it, tough shit. By the way, Kylie might be one of the, the world's most beautiful people. I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. Holy shit. You know why, don't you? These people are Armenian. World's most beautiful people. Uh, she's the one that's with Travis Scott, right? The one who killed everybody at the concert, I think. Um, now they're in hot water while people are lashing out because these people, when they want to travel somewhere in California, they get into a private jet. And as what I'm understanding is private jets leave a larger carbon footprint than regular jets, like five to 10 times the amount. And these people are so rich that when they want to travel someplace that's um, 15 miles away, they get in a jet. People have been following, tracking uh, through whatever flight logs, their jets and they have gotten on any one of several uh, private jets and traveled for three minutes in order to get to a location. So they get on this fucking sweet whip like this one. And uh, I guess uh, Kylie and Travis Scott both have a private jet. And they're like, which one do you want to take? So they end up uh, posting that. Kylie captioned the snap. You want to take mine or yours? Uh, and then people like lashed out at them because they were bragging about their jets. What the fuck do you want them to do? They have jets. Who gives a shit? And then it got even more involved because then people started paying attention to how long the flights were. And, you know, some of them are half an hour some of them are 10 minutes and they actually took a three minute flight this one's 12 minutes kylie's jet takes regular flights amounting to less than 15 minutes each which her uh, further horrified their critics uh many people were quick to point out that they'd made sacrifices in their own lives in their bid to protect the environment amid a growing climate crisis but questioned whether it was worth it while celebrities were able to be this reckless with their own carbon footprint. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. If I have all of that wealth, I'm taking a fucking uh, private jet to the mailbox, and anyone who is bitching on this fucking uh, story about them uh, uh, taking three-minute flights is a liar because if they had all that wealth, they would do the same fucking thing. It's like, huh, we could drive through L.A. traffic for 40 minutes to travel 10 miles or jump on our private jet and get there in three minutes. Hmm. Well, I really, I know I'm a billionaire, but I'd rather worry about the environment. No one's going to say that. You would not do that. No one here, if any of you can look in the mirror and say, yes, I would do that. For You're a liar. You're a stone cold liar. Um, if I'm Jenner and people brought that up, I would say, uh, well, yeah, I'm a billionaire and there's no fucking way that I, you know how much money I pump into the economy with what I spend. Do you have any idea 
how much money I you you're GD right. I am going to fly a plane. In fact, for every tweet that I see of you bitching at me, cocksucker, I'm going to do five more laps. I will intentionally take the three-minute flight and make it 15 because you assholes are bitching about me flying my plane that I bought. Fuck off. (laughs) This This guy writes, while swapping plastic straws for paper and using reusable shopping bags are well intentioned. No, wait a minute. No, that isn't what I wanted to say. This guy, right? This guy wrote Kylie Jenner out here picking which color private jet she want to take today. Meanwhile, I got to chug my iced coffee before my straw becomes paper mache. Now that's fucking funny. Uh, the uh, uh, CO2. From a private jet, emits two tons of CO2 in just one hour. Eh, fuck it. Yeah, um, I, I'll i recycle, but I'm not going to lie to you. If I've got the money to get a private jet, I'm just going to go out and joyride. Yeah, that's happening. Fuck you. No way. There is no way, no how, I would ever, I would slow down. This person wrote, 80% of people have never taken a plane, and Kylie Jenner is out here taking regular 10-minute flights, five flights in the last week, under 30 minutes. One was three minutes long. Her carbon footprint for one 10-minute flight is more than some people make in one year. Too bad! Oh, this is great. I would be sitting around laughing at all of this. I'd get my jet and pull... A fucking big ass sign that you see when you're like on the beach and they and they they drag the advertisement. And it would say two tons of CO2 per hour. Oh fuck you. That is ridiculous. All right. That's my take on that. She should absolutely keep doing what she's doing. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to report this, but hot on the heels of the story of the monkeys in India grabbing the uh, dogs and puppies and throwing them off the roofs of the homes. That one happened because I guess a baby monkey got mauled by a dog in some shithole city in the... uh, uh, in, in, in India, the monkeys, uh, responded poorly and they, they actually sought revenge. Uh, on this show, I've, I've featured the, uh, the, the monkey riding the little motorcycle in Thailand that jumped off of it and grabbed the baby that was sitting on the side of the alley. And tried to steal the child. Hot on the heels of those stories. Hot on the heels of two weeks ago. The mother in India. Who was breastfeeding the baby. And the monkey got a hold and snatched it from her. And killed the child. How is this that a country that is armed with nuclear weapons, India. How is it that there is even one monkey alive in that country? If I'm in charge of India, or I'm running, I'm getting reelected, or I'm going, trying to win the presidency or whatever, I'm saying, I am here to abolish all monkeys. Um, There will not be an alive monkey in India. And that's the end of it. I bring this up because it's happened again. Uh, This hideous story is uh, not in any way less horrible than the ones I've already talked about. Mom and dad... We're getting ready uh, for a big day. It's the child's name day celebration. I guess that's something they do there. And 
the four month old was with mom. And they wake up and they go, hey, name day celebration. We're going to have a big party. And this is going to be great. Nerdesh Upadye, that is mom, Nerdesh, of Bareilly, India. I'm sorry, that is dad. Nerdesh Upadye of Bareilly, India, was standing on his third floor roof terrace with his wife and the child. And they're like, it's going to be a wonderful day. We're looking out over the neighborhood. Now, the way it's written, it says the pack of wild monkeys landed and surrounded them. I picture like that scene in Minority Report when they're like repelling down the lines to get the bad guy. That's what the monkeys kind of descended upon down the, on them. And the, these fucking monkeys uh, that look just like uh, these surrounded these fucking people. The dude, now, if, if a monkey like that, I realize they're fast, but, y- you know, and, 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 and he knows what's coming. There's about to be turmoil. He's got to immediately start to attack and get a hold of one of the monkeys and use the monkey as a weapon. Swing the monkey around. But this guy obviously is a pussy, and he couldn't do anything as the pack of monkeys grab the baby from the hands of the mom and threw the kid off the roof. Nerdesh tried to run away with the four-month-old and that stupid fucking idiot. Actually, what happened was the baby, according to this, fell out of his hands to the ground and then the monkey grabbed the kid and just flung the kid off the side of the fucking building. Dead. The India Times reported that other family members ran up to the terrace to help, but were too late. The monkeys then attacked them as well. My God. Monkeys have been known to terrorize the people of India in 2019. It's talking about the other fucking shit that I just talked about. What the fuck? Fuck. What is going on there? Jesus. Can't think of anything worse. Chris writes, this is how it all starts. Right. Planet of the Apes. Ridiculous. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are moments away. From the asshole of the day, if you have any nominations, please include them now in the chat. Say hello to my friends at the Kent County Health Department. I posted a video with Amy Shears, the uh, uh, vaccine specialist at the Kent County Health Department. If you're getting set to travel anywhere overseas, you need to check with the health department to see if you need any type of vaccination. You go to some of these countries. Like if you were to go to India, there's definitely some vaccinations you need. Holy shit. Uh, Kent County Health Department. Find out more about them. Accesskent.com slash health. Do you need any vaccinations or anything like that? Accesskent.com slash health. And then, of course, God bless Gift of Life Michigan. Um, So on your ID, your state of Michigan ID, there should be a little heart on it. If you are an organ donor. If not... You can go to G-O-L-M, giftoflifemichigan.org, and uh, get on the organ donation form. If you are outside of the state of Michigan, go to registerme.org. Thank you, Gift of Life Michigan. You guys are awesome. And thank you to the audience members who've done this and signed up. I appreciate it. Take you two minutes of your time, and you could very well save somebody's life with um, if there is an untimely passing, which we don't like to talk about, like if a monkey throws you off a roof or something like that, uh, well, then, you know, um, you will save lives in the afterlife. Good for you. Thank you so much. Um, 
gift of life, Michigan. Thank you. I appreciate it. The asshole of the day. The brother who hit his sister with the hatchet. What about me? I I could be the asshole of the day for the gross story. Guy who built the uh, Glock switch. There's a nomination. Eric for the Daisy anal gland photo on my phone. Hmm. I was yesterday. Oh, I guess I was for being gross. I forgot all about that. Can I be the asshole of the day again? I'm such an asshole. I'm going to have to cancel my own Patreon to pay myself back. I'm lazy. I don't want to think anymore, so I'm just going to make myself the asshole of the day. Why not? Who gives a shit? Uh, Eric, for confusing me with Corey from Maine. Sure enough, whatever. Shut up. Okay. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. The show is done. That is my time today, and I will be back on Patreon. So thank you so much for being part of this one. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later on on uh, Patreon. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye. Oh, smarter than a former drug dealer trivia at 1030. Dale is taking on Alan V, like Victor. Have a good one. Bye-bye.